Hey y'all, welcome back to Cajun Country Living. We're back in full force today. Well, you are. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep up, but I did get released today and also we wanted to let y'all know as quick as we could in this video that my results did come back and it was non-cancerous. It ended up being a fibroedema, which is what they suspected it might've been. So we're just so glad that nothing else worse came of it. And we are very, very happy with our outcome. We want to give another thank you so much for everybody who has sent us prayers, who has told Jim Wayne, good luck with lad the whole time. <laughs> and thank y'all so much just for even sharing y'all stories with us. So on that note, I'm ready to get going. She's not quite ready. The doctor said she should really take it a little bit easy. She can still do things now. Uh, everything's good with the surgical site, everything like that, but she still can't just be ripping and roaring like she always tries to do. So we're gonna be pretty aggressive this week, but she's gonna have to dial it down at least to like five. Okay, you're five, my nine. <laughs> Sound good? We'll see. <laughs> well, should we tell them what we're gonna do? Yeah. How about that? Hey, everybody. I know, we messed up for one week and now we don't even know I'm what we're talking you. about. Yeah, kind of like we lost the whole groove. No, what we're doing this week is we're gonna be making the beams for our porch. We say we're making the beams for the porch. So a lot of people would buy like glue lamb beams for this application and they're really expensive. And we just, we're gonna try to build them. I've never seen anybody do it, but I mean, it can't be that big of a deal and it's not going to be holding that much of a load we did build beams for the inside of the house also i can put the link right here for that video but we did go ahead and build those ourselves they are doing fantastic now this is a little bit of a different application but really these are actually holding less of a load so heck if those are working in the house let's just go and do it for the board <laughs> so these beams are just going to be stacked horizontal lumber glue screws the whole nine yards and uh, like I said, we've never done it before, but we're gonna get to it now. Let's go. All right. Real quick, let's talk about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. A few months ago, we received our Helix Moonlight Luxe mattress. We were so excited to get our mattress unboxed and ready to sleep in that as soon as we got our mattress delivered right to our front door, we didn't even hesitate. And we were so pleased with how our mattress turned out. Now that we've been sleeping on our Helix mattress for about over a month now, we didn't even realize how poor a mattress was before, so we will never be switching to another company. Our Helix has been a game changer for us. After a long day of work, we are completely wore out, and let me tell you, being able to get into our Moonlight Luxe bed has never made the relief of a long day feel so good. Not only are we sleeping better, but we are staying asleep longer and getting the back support that we need while resting for the next day of hard work. Our last mattress had what seemed to be a crater in the middle of it, which made us constantly toss and turn, ending in a restless night of sleep. Even Loudly Roos tried to sneak in. This industrious company has designed a bed that Jim being a soft bed sleeper and me being a firm bed sleeper can sleep side by side with ease. Helix has invented a sleep quiz to find the right mattress for you. The quiz is very simple. After you answer a few questions about your sleep preferences, the quiz matches you with the style of mattress fitted for you. Once you receive the mattress that you were matched up with, Helix offers a 100 night sleep trial. That means that for over three months, you're gonna be able to sleep in your Helix bed to make sure that it's fitted just for you. The best part about all this is that Helix delivers right to your front door free within the US. Helix offers a 10 year warranty with financial options and flexible payment plans. Helix knows that everybody's sleep preference is different, so y'all make sure to go online and take their sleep quiz. Use our link in the description or go to helix.com slash Cajun Country for $200 off your Helix Sleep Mattress plus two free pillows. So thank you Helix for sponsoring this week's video. So these are the boards that we are going to put together and Jim went ahead and laid out six on this side. And six on this side. We need another board? Well, well, anytime you use dimensional lumber, you if anything's gonna be holding load, what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna look for the crown. The crown needs to be looking up. And what that will allow is kind of a, look like a rainbow. So the more load you get on it, gravity is gonna to wanna to pull that down. So the theory is, if you have the crown looking up, 
when you put the load on it, it's going to flatten out. But if you start out with a crown like a smile, then it's going to do nothing but deflect more and more. So what we're going to do is, what we're going to try to do is, these are horizontal boards, not on their edge. We're going to try to induce a crown. We're going to try to build a crown into this beam. That way, if they do have a little deflection over time, it should flatten out. No frowns, all crowns. Yeah, I guess this is one of those situations where we really do want to not turn our frown upside down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> screws for nothing that has to do with the deck. <laughs> they should call them beam screws. Oh. <laughs> hey great. Okay so to try to put a crown in our beam we have to start off with a bow in the first board that we're going to use. So what we're going to do is, is screw each end to this. This is a board that we're not going to use it's just scrap. So we're going to put a screw in each end of there and then we're going to shove this in the middle and it should make like an eye, like an eye, not a eye or an eye. So I kind of envision like an open eye, not like two eyelids together with a tiny little crack. <laughs> That's more like a, you're just waking up after a long night. It must be. Now we start the glue and screw and glue and screw process <laughs> until we have all six layered up, right? Yep. We're going to laminate them. We're going to make a glue lamb beam. Hootis. <laughs> Good enough for me. You know, it's one of those deals to where I'm not sure that this is the most perfect function that you could have in this situation, but I do know all of the treated beams that I've seen around here so far, they're warped real bad. They have twists in them, splits, cracks, big knots. Hundreds of dollars. <laughs> yeah, that too. So if we were going to have a big long span, we would probably consider doing something different. But I think this will be plenty good for the application we need it in. You know what it would be called if you took this apart? What? Delamination. Cha-ching! You know what I would call that? Backing the screw out and peeling it apart. <laughs>
Now we got the beam put together. We have screws in it about every 12 to 18 inches in each individual board. Plus we have glue in each layer. So hopefully it's going to hold the crown in our board. So we're going to flip it over and then take our bottom board off. Go from there. It's going to work. Absolutely. How couldn't it? How could it not work? I ask myself that every day. <laughs> <laughs> It worked. Alrighty. On to the next. Okay, so now we've given our beams time enough for the glue to dry. It's all set up. It's just waiting on us now. First thing that we're gonna do before we start flipping these around because we have to put the beam hangers on to attach it to the house. So with us flipping it back and forth, I don't wanna lose track of where we put the crown in at. So I'm gonna go ahead and write top. That would happen to us? That would happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and write top on here. That way it makes it kind of idiot proof for us. Okay. I think I missed a step on something that I told y'all previously. You know, we built these with the crown in, right? Like we previously discussed. The reasons we didn't want to use a solid timber is because of the warping also. Each one of these boards, like we talked about, either has a smile or a frown. I guess that depends on whether you're kind of a cup half full or cup half empty kind of person. And it's no matter what, no matter where you buy your lumber from, it is going to have that natural curve. I didn't know that before we actually started building and whenever we started building our stud walls in the very, very beginning, Jim showed me that. And I thought that is crazy that every single piece of wood is gonna have that. Even if it's minute, everyone has a natural curve. So what we did was we attached one board in the beam with a crown this way and one with a crown that way. That way all the wood grain structures constantly pulling away from one another and not all in the same direction to cause a war. That's what we're thinking. And hopefully it's going to work out for us. I don't know why it would. So this is what the hanger looks like. This is a Simpson strong tie. Obviously should have the word strong in it with how big this is. So what we're going to do is put this on the wall, wherever you want your said beam, not at this height, obviously, but just so y'all can see kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to hang this up here. We're going to screw this in. Then we're going to take our board that we built, obviously. Just imagination, use your imagination here. We're gonna set it right in here. And along the sides here is screw holes. So we'll screw it as far as it is tall and that'll be our hanger. So this is a 12 foot beam that we built. I'm marking six foot so we know exactly where center is. That way when we get ready to rig this thing up to pick it up to hang it in place, we know about where to put our uh, rigging on it to make it level. Should we label this bottom or do you think top's enough? <laughs> I think we can figure it out with the top. So the reason for flipping this over is that way we can just slip this 
right on top rather than trying to shimmy it on the bottom and it does have a screw hole i don't know if we're gonna put a screw in are we yeah we're gonna try to get this thing mounted to the beam we can flip it over that way it's already mounted we get it square we get it level and screw it right inside the house where we're going to be mounting this to the house we have a double two by ten backing structure so this thing should be pretty much bulletproof so now since it's hanging lower do we need to cut that off or can we just leave it no i think we should go ahead and cut that off and uh get rid of that excess because if we don't the hanger is going to butt up against the joist so we don't need that you end up with some gaps there and and that's not what we need so we're going to trim it to fit and get ready chop her off Have you ever had a task that seemed to be just out of your reach? So have we. It's time to introduce to you the Extension Lift Master Hootis Pro. With the Extension Lift Master Hootis Pro, you can easily reach and lift items that were previously unaccessible. Featuring state-of-the-art backyard Cajun engineering, this device is a game changer. Simply attach your straps, chains, rope, and etc. to the shackle provided with easy to operate tightening and loosening features. The Extension LiftMaster Hootis Pro is unavailable at all major retailers. Now that we have one hanger cut and screwed in place, we will do the same to the other side. From this point on, we knew we needed to be extra cautious when hanging these beams. We decided to set up the time lapse to show y'all how we got it installed, and we'll be going more in depth when we hang the second one. Everything we are doing for our home is a new challenge for us to learn, and we are by no means pros. But we do know if we put our heads together, we can figure out the best way, we believe, <laughs> to get the job done. Also, can we just take a minute to recognize the extension LiftMaster Hootis Pro? Man, that is some Cajun engineering right there. Getting started on this other side, we had learned a few tricks that we think might work better on this side. For example, adding another shackle to change the direction of the lift to make it lift square. We got the shackle put in place and now it's time to go ahead and lift the beam straight up to go right, hopefully, up this side of the house. We have to line the beam up perfectly with the edge of this ceiling joist on the truss because these engineered trusses are cut to perfection. Jim needed help holding it square, so I went ahead and grabbed this handy dandy rake. We had to make sure that this beam was perfectly level because we got to measure from the bottom of this beam to the concrete slab. That way we know exactly how far to cut our supports. Now that we got the measurements, we're gonna cut one board that goes from the concrete to the bottom of the beam. And we're gonna cut one about nine inches longer to lap the side, to give it stability and make sure the beam doesn't twist. And just to make sure that those don't go anywhere, 
we're going to go ahead and screw those together too. You're not going to believe this, but we actually cut this the right length the first time. Once we got this secured to the beam, we went ahead and started our leveling process. And leveled, and leveled, and leveled. Or to those of you, unlike me, that actually knows what's going on, or plumbed it, or plumbed it, or plumbed it. <laughs> so wrapping up things, we put in this brace to keep our support nice and straight. And all we had left to do was take everything down, put everything away, and there you have it. Our beams are up. <laughs>